few places that exemplify the natural beauty of Southwest Virginia like the Cascades do. Tucked between Doe and Butte Mountain in Giles County, Virginia, the Cascades have been one of the primary outdoor destinations for locals and Virginia Tech students for years. But how did this beautiful waterfall form? The answer lies in the area's geologic past, thanks to the forces of tectonics, deposition, and erosion. Today we will be following Jordan, a Virginia Tech student who will be hiking to the Cascades for the first time. We will learn about the Cascades' geology with her along the way. Excuse me, I've never done this hike before. Could you tell me more about this river? Yeah, the falls and all the water you pass along the way are only a small part of Little Stony Creek, which spans over 100 kilometers. The creek has water supplied to it through two tributaries, Lowell Creek and Pond Drain, and eventually flows all the way down to the New River. Thanks so much for the information. No problem. Bye. Little Stony Creek has eroded a basin through the plateau over millions of years, which is evident in LiDAR imagery. Hey, you sleeping rocks over here? Yeah, this place is pretty cool, huh? You know, if you look closely, you can see that the creek has changed the shape of the channel. How? Well, aside from the creek, there are a few different kinds of channels that are morphologically different, but the dominant one here is a steppable channel, and it's formed from the interlocking of different sized rocks. They're usually associated with steeper gradients. Step pool channels can be influenced by anything from channel width to flow magnitude or even vegetation and woody debris. Thanks for the information. No problem. Have a good hike. You too. Where did these boulders come from? Well, they're coming down from the hillside on either side of the valley. You can see some in the landslide behind me, actually. They're preventing erosion because they're so large and so strong. So you can see that there's a nice step forming in the river here. The two really big boulders have come in and are kind of restricting the channel. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> The large boulders strewn across the Little Stony Creek Basin are remnants of the resistant cap rock forming the plateau and came down as the river incised a softer underlying rock. These rocks also display evidence of ancient life. Hey, do you see something interesting there? Yeah, I don't know what all these lines are on the rock. Oh, these are actually worm burrow fossils. 450 million years ago, this area looked very different. Worms created these trace fossils as they were burrowing in the sand to find food and shelter. Over time, these sediments became deposited and are now solid rock, which is why we see them here today. That's pretty crazy. So what kind of rock is this? My friend Jason actually knows more about that. I think he's up ahead. Let's go catch up with him. Sounds good to me. The surrounding topography is largely controlled by a bed of very strong and resistant rock called quartzite, and the top of that plateau is where the quartzite is exposed. Hey Jason, why don't you tell Jordan about these rocks here? Sure. So this rock crop and most of the rock you see around here is Tuscarora sandstone quartz size. And the Tuscarora is light gray, um, finds a coarse grain sandstone. And, and it can also have uh, cross bedding structures like this Tuscarora rock has. Cross bedding uh, structure is beddings that deposited at an angle to horizontal. It is a good indicator for ancient current. Thanks for all the information on the rocks, Jason. I didn't know that you could see that much just by looking at the rocks. Have a nice hike, guys. As Jordan makes her way upstream towards the Cascades, she's actually walking up through geologic history. The rock layers she encounters are dipping slightly upstream, so she is encountering younger rocks the closer she gets to the Cascades. Eventually, she crosses a point where the Tuscarora Formation is exposed as bedrock, and a waterfall is present along the creek at this point. As Jordan approaches the Cascades, she will notice that the geology changes considerably. Hey, do you guys know what happened over there? Actually, yeah, it's a rock slide. It probably happened fairly recently from a bad rainstorm. Water adds weight to the soil and decreases the rock's resistance to move. Eventually, though, the weight of the rock will overcome that resistance and drag a bunch of mud and debris down with it. If the rock slides bad enough, it can 
affects the channel size or shape, or even completely block off stream flow. That's pretty neat. So are these all the same rocks that I saw down close to the bottom? No, so actually the Tuscarora quartzite and sandstone ended pretty far down the channel. But what you see here is another thick layer of sandstone up at the top called the kefir. And then here, all of these finer layers are interbedded clays and sandstones and siltstones. So this is the Rose Hill Formation. So the sandstone up at the top, that's what the waterfall ends up getting cut off at. And then it breaks through all the weaker rock down at the bottom. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, this is really beautiful. Yeah, the waterfall is really nice. So, do you guys know why there's kind of like a ledge up there where the water's going over it? I do. The, um, the top is sandstone and that's harder than the surrounding rock, so the water doesn't erode it away. But then the middle section is shale, so it's caved in. And then the bottom section juts out again because it's inner bedded sandstone and shale, so it like, juts out again. Um, and the whole waterfall act itself is a nick point, which is created by the rock strength surrounding the area. Do you have any questions? Actually, yeah. Would you be able to tell me any more about Nick Points? Did you just call that a Nick Point? Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm actually a geologist. It's really interesting you know that word. So basically, a Nick Point is just any part of a river that's really steep, that's steeper than it should be. Sometimes it looks like a waterfall, but it could just be like a rapid that you go tubing on. Do you know how they form? Not really. So really, they could form in different ways. So sometimes what happens is the river basically cuts down. So if like sea level was dropping and the river would incise and retreat back as a waterfall. But here, I think it's probably from the rocks. The rocks are really resistant, so they create a cap. And over time, it holds it up as a waterfall and it retreats backwards. Over millions of years, the little stony creek will erode away the Cascades as cap rock. Because of this, the nick point creating the Cascades will retreat upstream and thus the waterfall itself will also move with it. This goes to show how this area is dynamic and always changing. What will the Cascades look like thousands of years from now? It is likely that it won't look like the iconic image of the waterfall that we think of today, but only time will tell.